Good evening everyone. It is Friday night and it's time for our live and tonight we're going to be talking about the narcissistic ex and their new supply or new partner. And this can be a real source of pain for many people because they do move on very quickly and if you are interested in why do they do that? How are they able to move on so quickly? Do check out my latest blog post on uh, the nurturingcoach.co.uk and it's got five reasons why they move on so quickly and it'll, it gives you some more information about how they're able to do that. But nevertheless, they do move on very quickly and some of that time is because they've already met that person, that this was the person that was already um, in, in their... Um, they were having an affair with them or they were certainly warming them up ready they had them as a backup for when the relationship went south um, and one of their harem of people around them um, and it can, it causes an enormous amount of pain because suddenly you are faced with one your own rejection I suppose is probably the easiest way of putting it of well how were they able to do that so quickly? And also the fact someone else is involved and they will no doubt stick their nose in because remember the narcissist is going to paint you as the abusive one. They're going to paint you as this awful person. And regardless of the truth, this new person who is completely under their spell, you remember, you remember what it's like at the start, they are exactly where you were. They believe everything they say. They believe that they are a victim, that they're a good person. And therefore, this if anything's wrong in their life, there must be someone else to blame. And it fits that it would be you. And it's to be honest, it's sometimes easier for the new person to come in to blame them when, they, when they're like someone, they're falling in love with someone. You want to see the best in them. So any of their slightly questionable characteristics... If you're able to say it must be someone else's fault, of course, that's easier for them as well. So they see you as the bad person. So you've not only got your ex who is obviously seeing you as the bad person and making out that you are the cause of all their problems and creating problems with your kids if you have them or, or you were the reason for the relationship breakup um, because you did X, Y and Z. You've now got someone else who is taking on this and three things really happen when the narcissist has a new supplier. And one of them is that they, they can sometimes use this new person to triangulate around your boundary. So they might get this new person to or they might parade them because they know it will hit your trigger points. And so you might reach out to them and be like hey what the hell's going on um so they can get around any boundary that you might have put in place they may use them and they may say that they'll only communicate to you through them because one it adds to their victim status that oh my god they can't possibly deal with you someone else must help them um but also it is including this other person and they will see some of your behaviours that they're describing because it's not normal. That's not normal that you would deal with a third party, particularly the new partner. And so when you're obstructive to that, it plays into the narrative of you being difficult and you being this, that and the other. And so it's easy for them to continue the narrative as well. What they also do is when they get someone, a new partner is it's their way of saying to everyone else, see, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm very lovable. I'm a kind, decent person because I've met someone else. So there's clearly nothing wrong with me. They must be the problem. And that's for themselves as much as anything, but it also, for the outside world, creates this picture, or they think it creates this picture of them being the perfect one. Um, and for them, like I say, it's about them telling themselves I am lovable, I am, somebody wants me, um, and therefore they have to have this new supply in fairly quickly to ease that rejection, that fear of abandonment that, that comes up very quickly for them when a relationship ends. And the other thing that happens is that they get their own needs met. We, we know that they are 
um, very selfish individuals and also very basic primal in many ways they they function on a very low um psychological level so they they need their physical needs met above and beyond anything else so they need somewhere to live we all need somewhere to live but they won't think about how they can get somewhere to live themselves they won't think about how they can pay for somewhere they're looking for someone to provide that for them they need someone to meet their emotional needs so that they aren't left feeling rejected and they aren't um when they do feel stressed or they do feel upset there's someone else to bounce off someone else to regulate their emotions to stop them from feeling that pain that's what they use people for that they are that, that commodity for them and it really is it's that worst thing of using someone else to it's not even a rebound because a rebound implies that there was emotion and you're coming back you go into another relationship because you you are hurting. They're not hurting. They're not rebound relationships. They are purely need based and use. They, they, they pick people that they can use. So if the relationship breakdown led to them being homeless, they will meet someone who has their own home. If the relationship breakdown led to them um, or men that they walked away from their kids for whatever reason, they'll probably find someone who's got kids so they can play super dad or super mum to new child. So it's, they look for whatever need and whatever, um, whatever will make them look best, both to themselves and to everyone else. And for you, as the ex, this does bring up a lot of emotions and some of which you may be struggling with because you can't quite understand why it bothers you so much. And if this is something you want to explore, please do get in touch. It is an important part of our work is how do you get over them? How do you, how do you align the knowledge that actually it's good that they've met someone else because it takes the heat off of you with the pain of how can they do that? How can they so easily brush me aside? And what does that say about me? Also, if you are struggling with how to communicate with the ex, if you do have children, please do grab a copy of my ebook from Amazon. Just search communicating with an artist or Sarah Squires in Amazon. You'll be able to download it to your Kindle just 99p but it creates it gives you some really great tools on how to communicate with the ex and keep those boundaries in place and protect yourself through that process especially when there's someone new because you can start to go back to speaking from that emotional place of hurt and anger when actually you need to stay as rational and as unemotional as possible the gray rock method is really important when someone else comes in because like i said earlier that new person is an extra person to spread the narrative that the narcissist has created. So if you can go grey rock and you can reduce that and keep your boundaries in place, you're not playing into that. You're not playing into that, that triangle again. So exes and their new partners, they're difficult ones because it plays at our human emotion. For any relationship that breaks up, it's hard when you see them with someone else, obviously, because you love them and you, you don't like the thought of them being with anyone else. That is perfectly normal. But with a narcissistic ex, when they move on, it's so much more because for you, you you remain in such pain. It was For you, it was a real relationship. It's probably unlike any that you've ever had before. Probably felt very intense and you gave more to this relationship than you ever have done before and so when it ends you are left hurting and you're left with lots of questions and you're left wondering will you ever get over it you're left wondering will you ever meet anyone again do you ever want to meet anyone again and yet on here they are straight into it with someone new plastering over social media how wonderful everything is how happy they are and again, that taps into that. Well, maybe it was me. Maybe everything the narcissist said about me was true because this they seem really happy with this person. 
But the truth is, it is all a facade in the same way as it was yours. Try and remember the start of your relationship and how it looked compared to how it does now. And you'll, you'll have a better idea of what's really going on in that relationship and know that the mask will slip and the reality will come out. Um, but like I say, if getting over them is something you are struggling with do get in touch if you're on facebook watching this then click on the blue button book now and uh, it will take you to our um website where you can book an appointment at your convenience if you're watching this on youtube i will post the link below and it pop will pop up on screen which is nurturing coach and um, co.uk forward slash booking book yourself an appointment it's just 39 pounds for a one-off session where we get to look at what's going on and lay a plan of action for you because this is hard this is hard when when someone new comes along and it's going to bring up a lot of things for you to start healing but it's a really good place for you to start so I'm aware it's Friday, you're probably all busy, last week of the school holidays here in the UK. So if you do have, if you're watching this later and have any comments, do drop them below. I do try and reply to them, um, I certainly read them. Um, and if you have any, anything you'd like me to cover, do let me know. I will do my best to cover it if I think that it's a wide enough topic for everyone. Um, and take care of yourself and enjoy what is remaining of the school holidays if you're here in the UK. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.